I, I think there's a balance here, right? You, you want to be as transparent as possible, but you also can't give away your competitive differentiation. So I, I think there's a couple things to talk about here. One is uh, do not write a, a privacy policy to your consumers uh, or your customers that is 55 pages long in legal ease, right? You have to be put it in English language so people can understand and actually read it. Uh, and it's, it's not 55 pages. We we all tend to click on those those apps and those privacy things because we just don't want to go through the whole process. So make it easy to understand, be transparent, balance your competitive advantage versus what you can actually share. I think the other critical component is really around th there's a business perspective here and there's a technical perspective here, right? How is the model built? What data is utilized? But then what is the outcome that was expected from the business? So we all see certain companies out there will utilize privacy and, and security as a differentiator and have billboards and so forth around those types of things. So how do you actually relate to your customer? Bring your customer into the mix, right? This is what we intend on doing. This is what we think we want to utilize. What are your thoughts and efforts? Because all too often we have people in a room that think they know what our what their customers want, but they actually don't, right? So ask your customers and, and bring them into that process. So I think from transparency uh, perspective, be as transparent as possible, protect obviously competitive advantage, bring your customers into the mix. Jitendra, you had mentioned transparency early on in the discussion. What does transparency look like to you? I think it's, it's all about um, leaning in with transparency to make sure that all the fear and misconceptions that are out there about AI, they get uh, diminished as much as possible. So just building a bond to what Steven said earlier, a lot of companies, uh, I've worked with very large companies, including Meta and Netflix, and, and they do a very good job of making everything accessible. But as Steven mentioned that, it, is it, is, it's accessible, but is it is it comprehensible? So I think um, um, coming from machine learning background, explainability of, of these systems is, is a very critical component in building trust. And explainability, as Stephen mentioned, goes goes two ways. One is uh, just help us understand what data has been used and then help us understand how the decision-making process works in the system. And if you just lean in on those two dimensions, I think those are essential for building user trust and, and most important, acceptance. If I trust the system, I will use it, I'll champion it. If I do have, if I have any skepticism around it, I will not use it, and I'll most likely using word of mouth. I'll say this does not work, and I cannot trust it. Grav, how do you feel about that? That seems like the a, a a good model for most organizations to follow. Absolutely, hiding behind a fifty-page document is no longer uh, the the right thing to do. I think most people will then uh, have uh, AI read that model and see where are the problems, and then and highlight them for them, uh, and and so 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 it does not. Uh, what really will establish trust with end users is simple ways in which def you define your principles. These are the ways in which we uh, uh, want you to use AI. These are our principles. We don't use your metadata and data for training. Uh, we don't want uh, these kind of use cases to be used uh, for AI. And once these principles are defined and followed properly, I think that sets a good direction for the organization. And after that, it's all about making sure that if there are any deviations from those principles, those are quickly handled uh, by the organization uh, through AI governance councils uh, that can be set up. I think those have really helped uh, uh, us at Informatica as we release Claire GPT, which allows users to use natural language for data management. Uh, many questions were around trust and transparency. So having the site where people can go and look at our principles and every time there are questions that arise, getting to them as quickly as possible. Love the use of information governance councils. That's very, again, again, I'm a big champion of the cross-functional approach. Matt, um, your thoughts on transparency? Yeah, I mean, I think it's paramount, you know, to building trust within AI, whether that's internal users, whether that's internal stakeholders, or whether that's your customer. You know, transparency within AI is, is paramount, and it's all over the news today. I think there's a couple of core strategies that you can implement First is a lot of the customers that we still work with, like you're talking about AI console, that's perfect. That's what you need to do. But I think a lot of the customers that we work with, big and small, don't have that, right? They don't have a central place of like, hey, what is, where is AI blossoming in my organization? And it's kind of the wild, wild west. So first and foremost, it's just getting some way to track where is AI being used in our organization. And then to the points that were made on the call here, 
what is our stance on it? What are our policies? What are our what are controls do we want to put in in place? And and does our employees know about them? Have they attested to these policies that we have in place? And then I, I spoke about this before, but I think it is important. We're talking about AI governance within our organization, but so many organizations today ship their data off to third-party providers. How are those third-party providers, what are they doing from an AI perspective, right? How are they managing AI within your organization? The second that you take customer data from yourself and give it to a third party to do something with, to drive efficiencies in what you do, you, in my opinion, are on the hook for that customer data. So making sure that you understand how third-party organizations are going to use AI with data that you transfer over there. And then we've talked about this, right? It's how do you build a holistic and fair, just overall arching approach to AI governance within your organization and have that cross-functional oversight from not just the product teams that are building it, but the privacy teams, the legal teams, the audit teams, the risk teams, right? What is the risk appetite that we have in the organization? But, you know, it, it is truly paramount, I think, um, that organizations build in these policies because ultimately this, this is the bedrock upon which they can point to to gain trust with their internal and external stakeholders. Roy, I would we 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 all agree, I think here that transparency is is a must have, but I would guess that in healthcare transparency is just table stakes. I mean, that's that that goes without saying, I would think. It, it does. Um, let me give one example of what not to do. You know, people want to Google. Google's duplex demonstration where they had a computer machine that had a very human voice make calls on behalf of somebody to businesses and make reservations for them without the people on the other side knowing that they were being talking to a machine. Um, Google thought this was a truly wonderful thing. It completely freaked people out. Um, and to in addition to that, when it made a call on your behalf, you couldn't hear the conversation or get a transcript of it. So if you want to talk about what not to do, that was really that was really a good example. Um, just some basic principles. Make sure your users know when an AI system is being used. Um, make sure they can get information on how it's been tested. Make sure you're explicit on how is it expected to be used, what kind of limitations it has, and where it shouldn't be used. Okay, um, you know, some of the work that's going on these days, Google is doing things like AI model cards and data cards. Think of those as nutrition labels for AI. So you are giving an example of a way to say in a very clear way um, to non-technical users, here's what this is, here's what it does, here's how we did it, here's what it uses, um, here are any you know, ifs and buts that you need to know about this system. And I think having things like that that people can understand is a great way to start on transparency. Mm -hmm.